Bouvier de Flandre has long been prized for his remarkable abilities as an all-purpose farm dog. Cattle driver, messenger, guardian, and protector, the Bouvier's mental and physical versatility first drew the attention of purebred fanciers in the province of Flanders, now Belgium and northwestern France, early in this century. Nearly wiped out in the ravages of World War I, the Bouvier survived to gain widespread acceptance in his native land, in Holland, and more recently, the United States. You'll be seeing many Bouviers de Flandre during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so, but all will help your understanding of the Bouvier. Remember that while we'll be concentrating on individual aspects of the Bouvier, your role as a judge is to evaluate the total dog. No one feature should take precedence over any other. The ideal Bouvier de Flandre should be powerfully built, compact, and short-coupled. Rugged and spirited, he has a rough, tousled coat to protect him in any kind of weather. Though few Bouviers are farmer's helpers today, his clever, resourceful nature has found him work as guide dog, messenger, and police dog. He should have a steady, fearless, and bold character, but should be serene and well-behaved. Let's begin our discussion of the Bouvier by starting with the head. In keeping with this breed's strength and size, the head is impressive in scale and is accentuated by a beard and mustache. Viewed from the front, the skull is flat and well-developed, slightly longer than wide. It should have clean, well-chiseled planes and should blend smoothly into the lean, flat cheeks with no sign of a step down to the cheeks. This will be more apparent to the touch than to the eye. This head has been shaved to show correct head structure more clearly. From the side, the top lines of the skull and the muzzle should appear parallel. The skull should be slightly longer than the muzzle. A proportion of three to two is the ideal. The stop is slight, although it may appear more definite because of the eyebrows. The muzzle itself is broad, strong, and well filled out. It tapers gradually toward the nose, but should never appear snipey or pointed. A narrow, snipey muzzle is faulty. Lips are dry and tight-fitting. How would you evaluate this dog's head? The planes are not parallel. The brow appears too prominent, giving a down-faced look. Remember that the head planes should appear parallel. And what about this head? The muzzle is narrow and lacks fill under the eyes. This head is faulty as it is too narrow throughout and has too little stop. Here again is the correct head size and proportion. Remember that the muzzle should be somewhat shorter than the length of skull, as this one is. And note the correct lean, flat cheeks. The ears are placed high on the head and are rough coated, not smooth. If cropped, they are held upright like these and should be triangular in shape. They should be cropped to a size to balance the rest of the head. The inner corner of the ear should be on a line with the outer corner of the eye. These ears are too large and low set. While these ears are set too high and too close together. Since ears are generally cropped, ear size is a cosmetic consideration. But ears which are set on too low or which are too closely set are serious faults. Eyes are oval in shape and are dark nut brown in color. The rims are black, like these. See how the axis of the oval shape lies on a horizontal plane. The eyes should contribute to the dog's bold, alert expression, like this. Protruding or sunken eyes 
detract from the typical fearless look. Light-colored eyes like these are not correct and should be severely penalized. The large nose is black and well-developed. It's round at the edges with flared nostrils. Note that a brown, pink, or spotted nose is a serious fault. The jaws are powerful with strong white teeth meeting in a scissor's bite. Overshot or undershot jaws should be severely penalized. Remember, in judging breeds with heavy facial furnishings like the Bouvier, you must examine them thoroughly with your hands. Now, let's consider the Bouvier's neck and body. The neck should be strong and muscular, widening gradually to the shoulders. It is gracefully arched and upright in carriage with no dewlap. The neck should be in proportion to the dog's length of head, as this one is. See how it blends smoothly into the shoulders, which are relatively long with good layback. The shoulder blade and upper arm are of about the same length and form an angle a little greater than 90 degrees. A short, thick neck with no arch like this one is faulty. This dog's short shoulder blade and longer straight upper arm are also incorrect. This dog's straight shoulders are faulty. Lack of proper front angulation can mean restricted front movement, which is not desirable in a working dog like the Bouvier. Here again is the correct Bouvier front construction with neck blending smoothly into well-laid back shoulders. Elbows should lie close to the body, turning neither in nor out. The legs are strong-boned and well-muscled like these. They should be straight, viewed from any angle. The carpus, or wrist, should maintain this straight line. Pasterns are quite short and slope slightly forward, as seen here. Dew claws may be removed. Feet are round and compact, with toes close and well arched. Nails are strong and black, while the pads are thick and tough. The feet should point straight forward, turning neither in nor out. From the front, you should see a broad chest like this one. Again, see how the legs are straight and well muscled, and the elbows close. What about this dog? He's too narrow in front, lacking the broad chest called for in the standard. This dog, on the other hand, is overbuilt in front. Although the shoulders should be muscular, they should not be bulging as these are. See how these loaded shoulders have forced the elbows out from the body. Here again is the correct front assembly with muscular but relatively flat shoulders. Note again the broad chest, straight, strong legs, and good feet. The Bouvier's body is powerful and short-coupled. He should be square in proportion of body length, measured from point of shoulder to tip of buttocks, to height, measured from withers to ground. The ribs are deep and well-sprung, as these are, with the brisket reaching to the elbows. Note that flat ribs or slab-sidedness is to be strongly penalized. This dog's body proportions are less desirable as he is too long in body for his length of leg. Here's a dog with the correct short, powerful back. See how the top line is level and firm with no sign of slackness or weakness. This dog's dippy top line is undesirable, as are roached backs. This correct top line blends smoothly into a short, powerful loin with wide, well-muscled flanks. 
Note the slight tuck up. The line of the back blends smoothly into the curve of the rump with no break at the croup. A sunken or steep croup is a serious fault. It is often accompanied by a low tail set like this one. The tail is set high and is docked to leave two or three vertebrae. The tail should be carried upright when the dog is in motion. The hindquarters are firm and strong. See how the thighs are wide and muscular. The angulation of the upper thigh should be in keeping with the angulation of the forequarters, neither too straight nor too sloping. Hocks are strong and rather close to the ground. Seen from the rear, the legs are set on a wide pelvis and are in line with the forelegs. The hocks are straight and parallel to each other, turning neither in nor out. A pelvis that is too narrow is incorrect. Remember that sickle hocks or cow hocks are serious faults. How would you evaluate this dog's hindquarters? He's overangulated in the rear, throwing him out of balance with his front. This dog is too high in hock and too straight in stifle. Here again is the proper rear assembly. Well muscled, with large powerful hams, moderately long, strong legs, and moderately angulated stifle joints. Balance with the forequarters is a key factor. The Bouvier's coat is a double one. The top coat consists of rough, harsh hairs, while the undercoat is a dense mass of fine, close hair. The harsh outer coat and thick, dense undercoat provide a water-resistant covering. The Bouvier head is distinguished by a thick mustache and beard. The hair is shorter on the upper side of the muzzle and is rougher in texture than the heavy mustache on the upper lip. These features give the breed its gruff, down-to-business expression. The eyebrows are made of erect hairs which accentuate the oval shape of the eyes. But look at this dog's coat. It's soft in texture rather than the rough coat called for in the standard. This is faulty, as are woolly coats or coats which are too long or too short. And this curly coat detracts from the desired tousled look. This dog's abundance of facial hair is not desirable. You can see how the side whiskers or mutton chops obscure the typical vigilant Bouvier expression. The coat may be trimmed, but only enough to accentuate the natural body contours. A good rule of thumb is trimming to a length of about two and a half inches. This dog has been properly trimmed. But this one has been over trimmed, resulting in a sculptured or barbered look. What about color? The Bouvier's coat can range from fawn to black with intermediate shades of salt and pepper, gray or brindle. All the dogs in this group have acceptable coat color. A small white star on the chest like this is permissible. This much white, however, is less desirable. Graying in the beard seen here, is quite common and not to be penalized. No one color is to be favored, but chocolate brown, white, or party colored coats are to be severely penalized. Movement is the critical test of any dog's conformation. The Bouvier's gait should be free, bold, and proud. See how this dog is reaching well in front and driving powerfully from behind. His correct and balanced proportions result in efficient, purposeful movement. 
Note the firm level top line. This dog, however, is out of balance, indicated by his restricted gait and pronounced roll. Coming toward you, the front legs should move forward in a straight line, like this. Note that at faster speeds, the legs may converge toward a center line, tending to single track. This dog is throwing his legs out to the side and is crabbing, which is incorrect. Going away, the rear legs should move in line with the front legs. They should form a straight line from hip to hock, like this. But what about this dog's movement? He is moving too close behind. Here again, is the correct gait, strong, powerful, and efficient. Finally, a word about size. Measured at the withers, dogs should be from 24 and a half to 27 and a half inches, while bitches should range from 23 and a half to 26 and a half inches. The ideal height is the midpoint of these ranges, that is, 26 inches for dogs and 25 inches for bitches. Bitches may have somewhat less mass than dogs, but must still maintain an overall impression of strength and substance. While there is no height disqualification for the Bouvier, any dog or bitch deviating from the minimum or maximum limits, as stated in the standard, shall be severely penalized. In judging Bouviers, you must remember that the key features to consider are the impressive head overall square appearance, and the tousled double coat. Perhaps the best example of the hardy endurance of the Bouvier de Flandre is this dog, champion Nick de Sotigam. He survived World War I by serving in the Belgian army in the thick of battle, and his name appears in early pedigrees. The Bouvier has changed considerably in appearance since then, but his remarkable endurance has brought him from an uncertain past to a secure future.